Today's program is sponsored by the generous support of our patrons. Your support helps to further our historic preservation efforts. For more information, visit patreon.com forward slash 1834 Restoration House. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. In the summer of 2021, we bought this Victorian house. Now at the time, we didn't know that the same family owned this house for over 120 plus years until we came along. In this special and long overdue episode, we're finally going to reveal what the mystery structure was used for. But first, we need to talk about the house and the people who built it. One of the things that intrigued us about this house was this old mystery structure. When we first arrived, the mystery structure was completely enshrouded in years and years of overgrowth. In the past couple of years, we've cleared a lot of that overgrowth out. The mystery structure is made of brick and it has two sections, the tower and the basin. The tower has a set of wooden doors which enclose a space with a shelf and not much else. On top is a set of nested sheet metal tubs with a drain pipe that dumps into the basin area. The basin is stepped down into the lower basin and that is drained out into the ground next to the structure. A lot of you viewers had some really great theories as to what this might be. The theories range from a laundry to an ice house, smoke house, cider press, animal trough, spring house, blacksmith forge, and even a maple sugar shack, which is highly unlikely given the climate that we're in. But we've done a lot of historic research on this property in the last year, and we've discovered the purpose of the Victorian mystery structure. And today, we're gonna to tell you what that is, and what it is may surprise you. Our little town started out as a water tank alongside the railroad tracks. Over the years, homes and businesses were built and a town was chartered in 1885. The town grew in size and was incorporated in 1917. Southern cotton became a huge industry here and was a strong driver of the local economy until the local textile mill closed in 2003. Today our town can be described as sleepy at first glance, but there are several manufacturing plants nearby that provide jobs for local people. Every town, no matter how large, always starts out small and there were always a few founding fathers and businessmen and women. These early men and women had big dreams and they formed the foundations of the towns and cities that we call home. One of our first families was the Brock family. As it turns out, most of the men and women in the family were entrepreneurs and several of the businesses around town were owned by the family members. To say that these men and women were prominent for citizens would be an understatement. One of those men named James Brock built a beautiful Southern Victorian house for his wife, Barbara. Our initial research turned up a reference to the house being built up in 1900, but the deeds show that it was transferred by Barbara to her son, J.W. Brock in 1901. Local records show that J.W. was already living here when his new bride, Mary, joined him in 1900. We now believe that the house is much older than we originally thought and may have been built sometime in the mid to late 1800s. J.W. passed away in 1931 and the house passed to their son, J.E. Brock, although J.W.'s wife, Mary, continued living until 1961. J.E. Brock passed away in 1956, and the ownership passed back to his mother, Mary. She died in 1961, and the house passed back down to her other son, J.O. Brock, and his daughter. The house continued down the family tree until we bought it in 2021. We're going to exit the family tree at this point because some important events occurred in the 1930s through the 1950s. Let's go back in time and see how life evolved. Telephone service arrived in town in 1897. Water service arrived in 1911. Electricity arrived in 1916. And natural gas arrived in 1960. Behind me are the remains of the town's original power station. The growing town and the construction of this cotton mill behind me here quickly overwhelmed the facility and they had to build a new substation elsewhere, which meant that this substation was retired. But what does one do with a retired power substation? Well, Mr. J.W. Abercrombie came along and he bought it and he turned it into an ice plant. 
He installed refrigeration machines and actually made blocks of ice to serve the townspeople. After a few years, two of the Brock brothers, J.O. and J.E. Brock, bought this ice plant from Mr. Abercrombie and they ran it all the way up until about 1950. Back in those days before refrigeration, ice boxes were very common. And even into the 1940s, people still used ice boxes a lot because refrigerators were slow to catch on. There was a huge industry for ice. They used to cut it off of lakes. They would put it in refrigerated box cars and send it across the country. It was big business. And for a town to have their own ice plant was a really big deal. So the two Brock brothers, they knew a good opportunity when they saw one. But eventually refrigeration started to overtake the ice box and the Brock brothers, well, they saw the writing on the wall and they decided to get out. So they sold the plant to another fellow who ran it for about another 10 years before finally shutting the business down. Well, let me show you something. Up inside the tower are two nested galvanized pans. The inner pan lifts out like this. And it has two metal handles. In the bottom of the pan are a bunch of perforations. Now these perforations were designed to let water through slowly. The lower pan beneath it doesn't have any perforations, but it does have standoffs, which makes this pan sit about an inch higher than the lower pan. The inner pan has a drain pipe that goes out into the basin behind me. Underneath all of this are a pair of heavy wooden doors that open into a compartment. And inside that compartment are some wooden shelves. The upper drain pipe exits the tower and deposits the water here in a series of steps, three to be exact. It comes here, steps down, and then steps down here. The entire interior surface is rendered with mortar to make a smooth surface. And down here at the very bottom is a drain pipe that goes outside. Right here you can see the remnants of an old outdoor kitchen. This is very common in the Deep South. Old maps show that this entire section from those pillars way over there, somewhere out here, was a whole bunch of different outbuildings, which means our mystery structure was inside. Now, Mr. Brock, he was a very smart man. You see, he would bring home big blocks of ice from the ice plant that he owned, and he would drop them into this pan right here. Now that ice, would slowly melt and drop into the pan below, out the tube and down here. Now, why is that significant? Because when you put any food down inside that compartment there, the heat from that food would rise up, would melt the ice a little bit, draw the heat out of the compartment, and that melt water would come down here. And that is how they would keep their food cold. But what about the water that comes out? that ice cold water would come here and it would drain down into this basin. Now let me show you something that we saw on a trip a couple of years ago. They would take the fresh milk and put it in tins or jars and they would put it in this trough right here. So then they would take the cold water and they would pour it in here and the water would, would flow over the milk and keep it cold. The problem is after a while it starts to warm up. So somebody would have to be in here all day long periodically putting new water into the trough to keep the milk from spoiling. The ice cold melt water that came down out of this pipe into this basin here was cold enough to preserve milk, butter, and any other fresh foods that needed to stay cold. Now this ice house would have been inside of a building, heavily insulated walls, heavily insulated ceiling, because they didn't want any heat coming into this room and melting the ice prematurely. The goal was to keep it cold. But now that water that came down here in the trough would eventually fill it up over time and you had to let some of it out. And that's what the drain pipe is for. It's a terrible tragedy that all these historic structures were torn down. This property used to be much larger than it is today. It encompassed the land way down there and way down there. There were no neighbor's houses here back in those days. And the land was covered with, with barns and sheds and all kinds of outbuildings. But of all the buildings that were here back in the day, all of them are gone except for our remnant to the mystery structure and possibly the barn over here next door. It's been a goal of ours to try to reconstruct the outbuildings that once occupied this area. 
Now we believe that this was once a tractor shed and we have a tractor now. So the first thing we plan on doing is building a new tractor shed right here, but we're going to use old methods and old style materials. And then coming forward here, the mystery structure, which you now know is an ice house, used to be inside of a building. Well, we're going to try to rebuild that building around the mystery structure and contain it again in a heavily insulated space and see if we can restore this thing so that it can function once again as an ice house. And finally, we'd like to take the foundations of what's left over here of the old outdoor kitchen and build a brand new outdoor kitchen, but again, using historic materials and methods. We don't know exactly what it looked like back in the day, but there are plenty of examples around the area of what an outdoor kitchen would have looked like circa late 1800s. But here we have our foundations and we have our chimney foundation. If you live in a historic property, we encourage you to embrace that history, learn about that history, and preserve that history. Because you're living in a place where the men, the women, and the children of old lived their lives and helped to form the country that we now live in. A lot of time and attention went into the research of this video, and it took us a long time to figure out exactly what was happening here, but find out we did, and boy did we ever find out. It was fantastic yes. and a lot of fun. Well, thank you for watching this very special 1834 Restoration House episode.